Hey! I think. Is this working? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's working. How's it going, dudes? We're gonna have a good time. Doing drawing, doing the things. I turned on low latency this time, just to see what would happen. And it did seem to help a little bit. Let's see, who is here? Four people here? Great. Alright, uh, let me know if audio sounds okay, if the music's too loud or not. It might be. Well, nah, I don't think it's too loud. Okay. So, uh, today we're gonna make a little, uh, portrait not unlike the one in the center here. A little surrealist portrait, but you get to add your own little spin on it. But before we do that, uh, while people kind of gather up their materials that they need, uh, you'll need, like, you know, paper, pencil, eraser. Uh, we'll be working in chalk pastel today, but if you just have anything that colors, that's fine. And, uh, a computer? Probably need a computer. Or your phone. Whatever you're watching this with. Uh, so while people get settled in and start trickling in, where I have a very brief presentation on Rene Magritte and surrealism. I don't know too much about it, but I will share what I do know. Oh, hi, guy. It's nice to see a familiar name. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, my day job is working at a little art studio, uh, teaching kiddos. So while we're closed, we had an idea to do some, do some YouTube streams. Um, so, so that's what's, that's what's going on here. The, the latency is a lot more, it's a lot different. So I have to wait a while for people to respond, but that's why, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fun job. Yeah, I think so too. It's just a nice way to just keep your mind off things for a little bit and uh, make some neat art. Um, it's a little bit more structured than my usual art club sets on Mixer, which I won't say what my channel is because I don't want kids finding it. Uh, <laughs> this is work. I'm on the clock here. <laughs> so let's get started. Uh, whenever I think about art history and uh, doing a lesson about art history, I like to give a little bit of uh, kind of context about what art movement came before it or overlapped with it and what art movement came after it. So the surrealist movement um, movement uh, kind of came about as kind of an extension of Impressionism. Uh, here's an example of an Impressionist painting. Basically, what defines an Impressionist painting is something a little bit more loosey-goosey and blotchy because the artists were focusing mainly on the colors that they saw uh, just to get the... Uh... Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I never kind of... It's, it's always been a challenge for me to kind of figure out, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, the bookends of the styles. That, that's a good way of putting it. Um, anyways, so Rene Magritte was alive from 1898 to 1967, which was a lot later than I thought it was. Maybe because it's a black and white picture, I always think it's a lot, um, <laughs> a lot longer ago than it actually is. 1967 was not that long ago. And uh, you might have seen... Uh, a drawing his art his art has been uh parodied or copied a lot um in history so you've probably seen something like this or like some parody of this and basically in french this is this is not a pipe um 
so anyway, for, for the Impressionists, it was more about the artist painting what they, what exactly they saw and just giving like an impression of it. Haha. -ha. So what the Surrealists did differently is that their art was a lot more kind of polished and realistic or naturalistic as they'll say. Um, but then they'll like change something about it <laughs> to make it not realistic. So here's the realistic, uh, depiction of a pipe, but it's not a pipe because it's a painting of a pipe. <laughs> That's what this actually is. So it's kind of like a, I interpret it as kind of like a jab at impressionism. Cause like, this, this is what I draw this is what I see. And I was like, well, this is what a pipe is, but this is not actually a pipe. It's paint. <laughs> Copy newspaper article that was in black and white. Yeah. 2001. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like a whole thing I can get into about that, about black and white photos, but that's for another time. <laughs> so I also want to show some... Oh, and um, pop art was a lot um, inspired by surrealist art. Uh, pop art is like... Hmm, kind of like collages. Uh, I have some examples of other surreal art here. Um, something common amongst all of these is that <clears throat> the things that are depicted themselves are depicted realistically. Uh, like, it's not Impressionism where it's just like you see the paint strokes. It's, it's like, it's almost like you could take a photo of it and like that kind of realism. But the things that are actually in the picture are what make it not realistic. <laughs> like, I don't even know what all this stuff is. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Salvador Dali is a very famous artist. He was also a surrealist with the melting clocks. And of course, my, my girl Frida Kahlo uh, making a lot of cool surrealist art. I tried to find one that wasn't so graphic, but... She does a lot of very surreal stuff. So I think this would be uh, a good place to kind of reflect a little bit on Rene Magritte specifically. Where realism meets surreal. So uh, we can think about for a second about what techniques Magritte uses to make the drawing look surreal. And if I were to look up, whoops, sorry, I disappeared for a second. A definition of surreal. Let me, let me, surreal definition. Having the qualities of surrealism. I love those kinds of definitions. And in a, in a example of it in a word is a surreal mix of fact and fantasy. So, uh, <laughs> oh, really? Is that, yeah, it's like, is that so? <laughs> so, the thing that is noticeable about Rene's paintings, like a common theme, is that he'll take something that is normal, I guess, like a room. Ooh, that's cool. Um, of a of a thing that's that that's common. This is just like an empty room. You know, it's it's very realistic. But then he paints a giant apple to fill up the whole room, and it looks like the apple could actually be there. And the way that he does this is that the light from the window is putting light on the apple, and it causes this big shadow on the other side. And the apple also looks like it belongs in the room because of the shadow that the apple puts on the ground, on the floor, and on the wall there. And the ceiling. So it does really look like the apple is there, but that's what the part that makes it surreal. It's the mixing of something that's realistic and unrealistic and mashing them together or juxtaposing them or comparing them.
I'm always interested about what the titles are of these two. Sometimes it's good just to look at it without any other context so that you can make a uh, non-biased um, interpretation of it. But I wonder why it's called The Listening Room from 1952. Next up, here's another um, painting of his that I'd like to highlight. Uh, something like this might not be super weird to somebody that grew up with computers and Photoshop. And so it would be kind of easy to do this in Photoshop, right? You just look up a picture of a, of a train and you put it, bam, on a picture of a, <laughs> of a fireplace. Right? So this isn't collage, this isn't Photoshop, this is paint. This guy just thought of this and, and did it. Like, what kind of references do you look up to do something like this back in the day? And uh, I'll also give y'all some time to mentally kind of keep track of just how many things that you can find that might be either super off or even just a little off about the painting. while I take a sip of my coffee. There are some things that are obviously different or surreal about this painting, but some other more subtle things too. So try to find at least like three or four things that might be kind of off about this. And how does it make you feel? Now nah, we're not, we're not going that far yet. <laughs> So the first thing I notice is that there's a train coming out of the fireplace. But if you look closer, it's not really in and out of the fireplace. It's more like someone glued the back of it onto a fireplace. Or is that a start of another caboose? So maybe it is like kind of merging out of the out of the fireplace, like Harry Potter style. Platform nine and three quarters. I should think of a different reference. Alice in Wonderland in the in the mirror. Yeah. And face through. So that's a little weird. And while we're looking at the fireplace, it looks pretty shallow, doesn't it? Like it does it looks like it couldn't even fit a fire. So it's either being like covered up the actual inside of the fireplace or it's just like a really shallow fireplace. Because I feel like Rene had a good understanding of perspective. That's why he, he was able to draw it at this angle and kind of have it make sense. So it wasn't like a mistake that he made the fireplace look so small or shallow. It's a little weird. See that the train is smoking and it looks like it's smoking up and maybe through the chimney. But there isn't any like blur on the wheels or anything else. So it kind of looks like it's not moving anyway. Like maybe instead of smoke, there's a bunch of cotton balls. And it's just like a diorama. Let's bring our attention to this mirror here. I'm th This mirror is freaking me out a little bit. Because <laughs> this candlestick has a reflection. And this one doesn't. Did you catch that? Oh, and I forgot to s oh, I forgot to put in the title of this painting too. It was like something involving time. So there might be something weird about the clock either. And also looking at the mirror, it's not reflecting anything else in the room. So that kind of implies that this room is just empty otherwise. Like what's go what's happening? <laughs> and that's surrealist for ya. The more you look at it, it's more like, what's going on? What's what's going on here? So uh, today for our little art project that we're going to do, time transfixed. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, how do I go back one? Yeah, it is time transfixed. So I think that's kind of how I thought that the train might have not been moving because 
it's called times transfixed so it's kind of like things are still but the smoke looks like it might be moving but it's still very realistic with that with the shadows and those highlights there's a very clear uh, light source here going from from this direction because the shadow's going in that direction so maybe there's a light in the room but not much else so the focus of the project today, uh, we're going to be making our own kind of uh, Rene Magritte portraits. Uh, you could make it a guy in a suit and a bowler hat that has a thing obstructing his face. And I thought I'd just add this one too, uh, because I was thinking more about the lack of Photoshop <laughs> back in the day. But this looks like straight up someone took a lasso tool and just dragged it over. That would be so easy to do nowadays. But we're going to focus on doing something more like this. Because he has a whole series of paintings like this. So the project is to create a replication of Magritte's body. Or you can make a self-portrait. And I'll show an example of that. Uh, and we're going to replace or obscure the head and face with an everyday object. So that's the part that will make it surreal. Since if it's just, if it's just a guy standing there staring at you, it'd be a little weird, but it wouldn't be surreal. It's the addition of an object in a weird levitating spot is what makes it surreal. <laughs> if the apple's in his hand, it's still not surreal. The placement of it is what makes it surreal. And uh, you'll get bonus points if you go around your house and find something to to replace the head with. Like maybe you have your own apple, like a red apple, or your own green apple. I mean, I don't care too much. Um, <laughs> an orange, something like that. And let's see. Let me go ahead. I have a... A link to drop here. That has the presentation I just showed you, as well as this kind of little uh, project summary deal. So some other things you can change about the picture is to choose the colors in the background based on what feeling you want the painting to have. It's an overcast day. It's kind of kind of gloomy looking. Kind of adds to the kind of off put mood and then find an object around your house or research a photo of the object you want to cover the face uh, we don't really want to use like a cartoon or something not realistic to cover the face because renee's thing is that he combines different realistic things and puts them together to make them surreal and then the torso in the picture can either be a replication of what you see here which is what I'm going to do today or it can be your own deal it can be you or someone else you know and you can choose to make your project as close to the original as possible and only changing uh, the object in the face which is what I'm going to demonstrate today or you could change everything in the picture like you can change the body you can change the background and I have an example of that to show you that I made yesterday uh, keep in mind how realistic it needs to be in order to look to real good luck Uh, so, uh, yeah, the link I just shared has all of that stuff in there. And yeah, let's do that. Okay, everything still works? Great. My headphones don't reach far enough. Sorry, I gotta move my mic out of the way. Okay. So this one that I made yesterday... So this is an example of if you wanted to change all the elements in the picture, but still keep the idea the same, where you change the background. I made a nice sunset because I've been drawing a lot of sunsets recently. <laughs> and I did a self-portrait. I actually took a picture of myself, what I was wearing, to try to get make that kind of realistic. And then um, I found the coffee mug um, to, to, uh, to coffee to do my face with. So... What I'm going to ask of y'all is that you're going to have 
two minutes to find an object. Just whatever, just an object. <laughs> okay, go. I'm gonna, I actually haven't done that yet. So, um, hold on, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> I found something. I found uh, this little mushroom. <laughs> I have not looked in here for a while. What's in here? Oh, a bunch of bunch of locks and keys. Secrets. I don't, I forgot what those keys went to, but this used to hold candies and I had some in my room. So but bam, so I'm lucky. I have a lamp, a lock. Ooh, a lock would be fun. I, I could do this. Maybe I shouldn't have locked it. Uh oh. Uh, I'm lucky that I have like a lamp shining like right here. So, like, ah, oh, jeez, ah, oh, jeez, ah, oh, jeez, the key's stuck. I don't think this key is meant for this cheap lock. Yeah, because it's a little heart lock. Okay, well, the key's stuck in it, so. Maybe that can be part of it. <laughs> and the heart is unlocked. <gasps> Symbolism. Uh, so if you could find, uh, so, so an example for this is that you can see the lamp is coming from the left side. So a good reason to kind of have a physical object in your hand as you're doing this is so that you can use the lights and darks of it to kind of show uh, how realistic it needs to be. But this has that too. This has the little shiny parts and dark parts here. But you also want to use uh, your background also to help show that. Like, since I made a sunset, you want some more light to be at the bottom and darks at the top, if you do a sunset. All right, hope you guys found an object because we're gonna get started. I, so I'm gonna have the picture, the picture of him up. And I'm just gonna try to copy it as close as I can because I can't, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> okay, let's do Uh, first off, where'd I put Mr. Ruler? Oh, here it is. Hmm. 
Okay, so even if you're doing a self-portrait or not copying the original work, the basic structure of everything is going to be the same. So you can follow along for like the first part and then start customizing it to whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to kind of inflate this picture a little bit because the original picture has his body kind of like all the way to the bottom of his arms. So it kind of makes his coat look extra long. So I still want to, I'm going to start with the head. The head's going to be kind of in the middle, a little bit above the middle. And so working on a smaller piece of paper. The Greed's canvas is a lot bigger. And pastel is kind of a big medium, so we need to draw bigger, even if it's on a smaller piece of paper. Head is kind of like an ovaly shape. I'm starting by sketching really lightly. Next is kind of the neck, and it looks like the collars around here. And the shoulders are kind of extra droopy. But then they start getting less droopy. I'm working kind of on both sides at the same time to keep it symmetrical, because that's another thing kind of surreal about this picture is how symmetrical it is. going to draw a line straight at the bottom to keep that symmetry in mind. So there's a shoulder and then the arms kind of start here and it's not a line that goes straight up and down. It's kind of also still at a curve. Here yeah, it's also at a curve. It may look like the shoulders are too wide, but the sleeve kind of starts at around here. And this sleeve starts at kind of around here. So you can see that the shoulder is more like here, and it's where the arm starts. Yeah. So this is a kind of basic kind of template that y'all can start with, and then you can add on to that however you want. So I'm going to add on to that by making it closer to Magritte's steel. I'm pretty sure this was a self-portrait of his. So I'm going to work on the head and the bowler hat a little bit more. I'm doing this in portrait mode. And the document camera is not very good at capturing portrait mode, so. The bowler hat's fun. It goes like straight up and down. big old ears. Okay, I'm gonna start erasing some things that I don't need to keep. that. I don't want to put tiny little details until after I get more of it done. Common mistake is making the neck too narrow, so let me widen that up a little bit. The Magritte has a very tall collar, so let's do the collar is kind of right underneath the chin there. Then 
down the Stardust coat before I get too far into the rest of the collar. So I'll make sure I'm drawing it big enough. It's super easy to get quickly bogged down into details to a point where you start drawing too small. So even though we're working on a smaller paper, make sure you draw big enough. And make sure you're not too happy with it. Because if it turns out I need to redraw the shoulders, I don't want to get too sad about needing to redraw these other smaller details. But it looks like I won't need to do that. This has slipped down even more. This is kind of like the collar and then the shoulder starts kind of way down here. And then bam, then the other one, kind of more steady. I might still do the mushroom. I think I'm going to go about it a little bit more humorously. I do really like the lock idea, though, so anybody doing this project along with me, feel free to steal this idea of doing a lock. <laughs> I think I want to do something a little bit more, more humorous. Because, like, get a life. Nah. So now I can, now that I'm happy with the big shapes, I can start doing some of the small shapes. I think the color is a little bit wider of this suit. Then he's got a little tie. The tie doesn't look like it's tied, it just kind of starts. Interesting. Since we're doing this for educational purposes, I have no qualms with uh, straight up copying another artist's work. Because it's for educational purposes, I'm not copying this and saying that it's my own deal. If I didn't copy it, maybe I wouldn't have noticed that the tie is a little bit weird. <laughs> you can't start to notice things that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise if you weren't copying it. Why is that? Why is the tie just like a thing? Why is the tie red? It looks so stiff. Like, loosen up, buddy. Okay, let's work up here a little bit. Now, let me know if my drawing's um, ever out of frame. I'll try to pay attention. The leaves are kind of covering up that part of that guy's head, so there's some things that you kind of gotta make up to fill in any gaps. The ear is kind of more out there. Then the hat is a little bit rounder. 
and it curves and it goes like we that's the bottom of the hat and then the top of the hat or the brim of the hat I guess put that in okay Make sure this bowler hat is a domey enough. <laughs> and then the ear itself kind of has like a has like a deal here. Since we'll be doing all the shading in chalk pastel, you don't want to skip ahead too far and start doing shading with the pencil. And you move the burn of the hat, hat down a little bit. Double checking the stream health. Looks like it's a healthy stream. I haven't dropped any frames. Nice. Okay. It's only 3.30. This actually might be nice to take a picture of. Because it's almost like a template, like... All right, the torso's done. Now you just need to put an object in front of his face. That isn't an apple, but still, some, but still an everyday object. So maybe the lock would be better. Since the mushroom is not uh, really an everyday object, I mean, it's an object I found. Fun to take pictures of your progress sometimes. Okay, decision time. Now, now I do have to think of if I want to put a mushroom or a lock in front of his face. Hmm. There's a button here. I missed a button. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was the first kind of kind of test one. First time streaming on YouTube. It's a little, it's a bit different. It's a little bit different. But now I'm used to it. It's not that different. <laughs> This lock is this this key is seriously stuck in this lock. Okay, whew, got it. Sure, let's do a lock. That that'd be fun. Should the lock be locked or unlocked? <laughs> Let's see. 
the key, the key to my heart. Okay. Yeah, I'm starting to think of if I draw the lock and the key here. That leaves a pretty big gap in the middle of the face. And I'm not sure if I feel like drawing eyes. <laughs> Something I'm not very good at. <laughs> Just draw the lock bigger and it covers some of the hat. Work smart, not hard. But I can take my time with this. This is a two hour class where we can take our time. Try to have it in the middle of the frame here. Actually, let's see. Can zoom in a little bit. Don't fall over. Okay, great. Trying to see if I get the angle of it right. Like maybe we can see the bottom or like the side of it a little bit. And it's a little bit shorter than that. It's more like, it's more like that. Okay, then do do the big lock part. Hmm, it is further apart than that. like a little rainbow. I'm still looking at it. Okay. Ba -ba -dip. should be good still might be able to see so let's see the eyebrows around here so if I kind of kept going with that the other eyebrow would be around here so you can see a little bit of it I just don't think you can see part of that eye a little bit. Then chin is like here.
That kind of just looks like he's frowning. <laughs> let's do, let's erase that. Okay, next we have the key in the center. I mean, the, well, the keyhole in the center. It's a little bit bigger than that. And then the lock kind of goes across a lot more. Ba -ba bam, ba -ba bam, va va boom, va va boom. Uh, change my mind again. It's smaller <laughs> than that. So we have kind of have that little divot and then the little top and bottom thing. It's still a little big, but it's close enough. Okay, and then you can add whatever you want in the background. I mean, basically it's a sky. Um, so I don't know if you want to spend a lot of effort if you want to put in like buildings or other things. But whatever you want to put in the background, it does need to be there for kind of a... A specific purpose. Let me double check that these things are right. Oh yeah, the need of eraser is nice. <laughs> yeah, now I'll be the first to admit that this is a very like mm, high school like project. I mean, it's kind of fun. Especially if you're allowed to just kind of put whatever for the face. Yeah, I do have a set of these pencils. I didn't know what, like, to be and all those different other bees of the pencil meant until, like, meant until, like, my last year of college. <laughs> all those college professors sure loved their charcoal. That would be pretty much what I would exclusively work in. Because, of course, we've already mastered working with pencil. I never did. <laughs> I'm better now, though, because the last college, the last time I took drawing two, they they actually had us do a project in pencil, and I was like, could you, could you explain this to me? <laughs> um, at the studio, the age goes from, like, four years old, maybe even a little bit younger, to adults, <laughs> but uh, typically... The range that we get is like six to like fifteen, sixteen. That's the typical kind of age range we get. Uh, students that are less than uh, five years old just have, I think it's five, uh, get an hour long class. And any student over five gets an hour and a half, if they can handle it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's nice. Um, especially since 
they're also really small class sizes. Um, which they're about to be a lot smaller. <laughs> um, but it's only like one teacher for every like three or four students. So we're kind of able to personalize it quite a bit. We do kind of have everybody follow a similar curriculum. But there are different difficulty levels and all that. So you kind of level up as a student. It's kind of fun. Get to level up. Okay, now some of you might still be working on the sketching, and I want to take, and I need to take a quick break just to get, um, just to get some sugar in me because I'm sleepy. So I will erase this, and where did it go? Okay. I'm just going to put a... BRB. Wait, actually, how about if you guys want to copy still what I got going on here, I'll have that and then let me just put in the corner BRB. If you're following along with my drawing. Okay. Be right back. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Looks like things are doing good. Okay. So we basically have an hour to do all of the coloring and rendering. Fun. Okay. So if you haven't already, get something to color with. And if you're doing chalk pastel, you can also get yourself the towel to wipe your fingers off on. And don't need pencil anymore. And just like with regular pastel, I'm going to start with the sky. And I'm still going to do my best to only use colors that come in a regular 24 pastel box to set which I can already tell is going to be tricky to do for the coat because I know that if you do have this color if you have this one that would be perfect 
That's like the color. Um, I think it's blue violet it's called. And it looks like... It looks like this. I've given it to a lot of students to use before, or had them borrow it. But the closest I can get to that with a regular pastel set is this color mixed with like black. <laughs> and maybe a little bit of purple. Ooh. Yeah, and this this is basically the color of his jacket. So if you have this color, you use it <laughs> for the jacket if you're copying the original. Which I might do just to just to spoil myself a little bit. But for everything else, I'll use just what have what is in a regular set. Um so to make this cloudy sky, I'm going to start with some lighter colors. Yeah, I wish I could use turquoise too. That is all right. So for this one, we're going to kind of put in all of the dark colors first and then the light colors on top of that. I'm starting with um, the minty blue color. Which some students will argue is turquoise. Or, no, it's green. I was like, yes, okay. Whatever you want it to be. And then... The light blue doesn't start until like halfway down the sleeves. <sighs> so I'm just gonna put it here. I'm not working on very nice paper as I did last time. Call it teal. Yeah, teal, turquoise, mint. Cause we have, cause we have this color too. Well, not in a regular set, but... And then there's this color. It's like, uh, I think teal is the closest, yeah. I like teal. I think it, its official name, though, get this, is pistachio. <laughs> I think is when you go online to buy pastels of this brand, they have, they have names for all of the colors, like, like in here. Like, this one is violet. And this one is shell pink. I'm pretty sure this one is pistachio. <laughs> toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. Starting with toothpaste color. Alright, let's see. It's a pretty cloudy day, so we have some, like... I'm gonna actually use some of this moss green, because it's a very kind of warm, almost grayish green. And I'm using the pastel kind of in a painterly fashion, almost like it's a paintbrush. So I'm still not I'm not rubbing into the paper quite as much yet. I did a little bit with this blue since I want it to be pretty blue. I can blend that a little bit just so you can see that. And then what other colors do I see? Gray for sure. Got some just your typical gray. gray and then blue the medium blue the blue that smells bad which you probably didn't notice when you're at the studio since it's a big room but if you're drawing in a smaller room you're gonna notice that this blue specifically smells funky don't know why <laughs>
Can you see the other blue, medium blue? I don't know. It's, it smells a little like sulfury. <laughs> it's like that kind of smell. <laughs> it's not. It's not great. Okay, here's where the magic happens. Uh, now I'm using white. And I'm using white uh, with a lighter touch here to kind of blend all the colors together and to make it lighter. So I have not y yet used my fingers to blend any of this guy yet. Except for the bottom of it. It's a fart color. Yep. Okay, so now there's a lot of dust. So just gonna blow that away away from the away from the computer. <sighs> okay, and I do kind of like this speckled light color. It's almost like making the texture of the clouds for me. But I am gonna blend where just the plain white is a little bit. It would blend a little bit better if I was working on better paper, but I'm not because I'm saving it for other projects. So that's something to keep in mind, isn't it? This is just um, an artist's law sketch pad. Okay, next, we're gonna get to where the darkest parts of these clouds are. So I'm gonna do some wiggles here, where I want the cloud to be the darkest. And I'll put some wiggles here. Then I'm gonna make those wiggles a little bit more gray like. And then I'm gonna blend it out on going in this direction, but not the other direction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Then where I want it to be lightest, I'm going to put right next to the other squiggles. Yeah, it's actually a sunny day here. Today. At least it is right now. We're in that type of weather where it'll be really sunny uh, for a couple minutes and then be dumping rain for another stream of minutes. And that's just, that's just the whole day. Mm-hmm. I do like that weather. It's good weather, it's real nice. So where I want areas to stay lighter, I'm only gonna just hardly touch so that it stays light. I 
And even though I wanted this part to be darker, it might have gone a little bit too dark. So let me lighten it up a little bit just by blending some light into it. Or better yet, I can blend some of this minty color into it. And some blue as well to lighten it up too. I mean, that's basically it for the sky. Try not to make things look too separated. Next is our boy. I'm gonna kind of go top to bottom for this one. Just putting in the solid colors. I'm gonna cheat and use this color. <laughs> is significantly less loosey-goosey than the sky so you want to move nice and slowly and kind of clean up the edges that uh, I kind of let the sky overflow on purpose so that I can um, cover it up with whatever color I make the rest of it and that way there won't be like a weird halo of no color around them even though that very typically happens. It's not a big deal if it does. Okay, the strip around the hat is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of white <sighs> to blend it and make it lighter. I'm gonna do the same thing with the brim. The brim appears to be a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna add white to it. If the brim looked lighter in a different way, like if it looked like warmer, then I would use maybe yellow to lighten it up. But since this is a very cold picture, kind of white is the best call for lightening up this part, at least. The top of the hat looks like it has some warmer colors mixed in. So we'll get to that later. And then below the brim of the hat can probably just be black. So I'm going to skip that part for now. Next is brown. Sorry if I don't use a brown that's in a regular 24 set, because all of these browns kind of blend together. I can guess vaguely which ones I think are part of a regular set. You guys got a little bit of hair here. And if it's a small part, like this, as long as you color it in enough, you don't need to blend it. Okay, next for the skin. If I squint the skin, you, you would think you, your kind of default color when you go for um, like white skin is like the peach color that comes in your pastel set. But if you squint at this picture in particular, in particular, it looks, his skin looks way more yellow. And that there's a big shadow on the right side. So I'm actually going to start with this, um, not the golden color. That's the golden color. I'm going to start with the slightly 
kind of darker version of it. That's next to the like the browns. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Sienna, maybe? Ochre? Don't forget about the ears. Unless if the hair is covering up the ears, and which is fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's how I cheated with, um, with this one. It's like, haha, I don't have to draw ears because I have hair. Okay. So the yellow looks super sickly right now, which makes sense. That's because we haven't added lights and darks on it yet, which we will. <sighs> don't worry. Get the neck in and the white I'm um, <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna wait for her and drown this it says yep pretty much uh, I didn't have my subtitles on this whole time no oh that's because it's part of the mixer stuff oh geez oh geez so much mixer stuff okay uh because I have all of my Firebot alert boxes and chat for Mixer. There we go. That should have been there the whole time. Let me move it up here. Okay. Uh, red tie. Pastel does not like to be red. The only reds that come in your boxes are these two, and they're both not as red as that red. And I think this one's in your box too. This is more orangey red. So we're going to mix these two together to try to get it to be a strong red instead of just pink. I'm going to start with the more pinkish red the cooler red and this time uh, other than the sky where I was just brushing it on here I'm using a lot more pressure to get that in there but now very lightly I'm gonna put um the more orangish red on top of that just to warm up that pink a little bit you know the colors you won't be able to match it exactly since Magria had oil paint which you can make any color you wanted pretty much and we just have pastels so as long as you do your best it's fine okay next is the suit when you're um, coloring something that's a lot darker, or at least darker than pencil, if you fill up this whole thing with your dark color, you're gonna lose all of these pencil lines that um, separate all of the parts. So, at least what I do to prevent that is that I add in some of the lights in first and then the dark. So let's see. Yeah, this is a very cool colored suit. I think we're going to need blue for the lights. So I'm going to look at my reference picture to see where the lighter parts of the suit are. And color those in lightly. Not as much as I did with the tie. This one, there just seems to be more light on the outer part here. Uh, 
And if you're doing this of your kind of own creation, like a self-portrait, you can still look at the at the shading and copy how the shading is done on Magritte's uh, torso. Because in my opinion, that's definitely the trickiest part. Is um, shading clothes. Okay, and then maybe I'll put a little bit of a minty color like here, here, and here. That's it. Okay. So you could blend it now, but I'm actually going to put on this color next. An alternate solution that you could do for this is um, just paint in one color in one section at a time so that you can go inside the lines better, which is what I'm also going to do. I don't want to put in the darks in yet because that is black. I'll just do the button again. It's not too hard to figure out where the button should go. But I'm going to use some more pressure where I want it to be darker to try to separate out the, the arms. I'm not considering this all the way colored in yet because you see like here there's still some of the white of the paper that's showing through so I don't consider that all the way colored in yet but I don't want to yet because uh, since this paper is a little bit cheaper uh, putting layers and layers and layers of pastel won't work <laughs> Which is why I'm using this color instead of using one that comes in a regular pastel set. Because I can just tell it would not look good <laughs> to try to mix three different colors to get the first base color in this picture. You can always add more. You will add more. Okay, that's a decent start on it. We just wanted uh, just enough shading to separate all of the pieces, like arm, that, the thing, and the other arm. We'll add more lights and darks later. Lastly is the white for the collar and the dress shirt, which it's a pretty bright white, so I'm gonna wait on that. And I'm also going to wait on this. So let's start adding some lights and darks.
I'm gonna work my way back up to the top. The lights are pretty similar to what I did for the jacket where it's very cool so I'm gonna put some blue up here for the light part of the hat. And then some white for the lightest part of the hat. Which is not like at the very top, but it's almost at the top. I mean, that's pretty much it. If it got too light, you can put your darker color back on top, which is another reason why it is quite tricky to um, mix three colors to get a color close to this, because if you want to backtrack and add the previous color back on top, well, then you've got to add three previous colors back on top, which is not fun at all. <laughs> um, and then the hat gets super dark. So I'm also using black here. I know some of the younger students are appalled because I'm using black at this step. Because usually we say don't use black until the very end. It should be the last thing you do. Which, yes, you're right. But you're in an advanced class now. As long as you can control where it goes, then go for it. <laughs> um, it just saves a lot of heartache of um, black getting into places that you don't want it to go on your picture. Like here, I'm not going to blend it at all because it's going to get into like the hair and all that. And next I'm going to pick out dark brown, if I can figure out which one it is. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? Whoops. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna go over basically all of the hair. With the dark brown. Also with dark brown, this one, uh, I'm gonna use a lot for the shading on the face. But I'm using a lighter touch with that. And then the shadow that the hat casts is a little bit cooler than that. Hmm. I'm gonna stick with this brown though. And then I'm not gonna worry about it matching it exactly. And this is why I haven't colored in the lock yet because uh, I'm still blending in the area around it. And it would be very tough to blend around the lock, so I'm blending into it a little bit, but I'm not worrying about it yet. Because that's what Chuck Pastel do, you can cover it up. Just gonna use the corner of the pastel here. Yep, bop, bop. Put the shadow, shadow of the ear in. And So I have that. That already looks a lot more realistic. And now I'm going to take the peach color and put it on where the skin is going to be lightest. So kind of on this side of the face and the head. And there's a light part where the, where the cheek is. Now I'm only going to blend it a little bit since I don't want to lose all of the, all of the light there. Okay, it's fine. Next, what color should I use? I'm gonna use some of this brick red. Wait. 
exaggerate some more dark, dark parts. Bottom of the ear here. Yeah, the ear on this side. The chin here. Then I'm going to put the dark brown back on top of that in the smaller parts to kind of blend that in. <laughs> now I'm going to go back to the, to the golden yellow, the lighter yellow. So there's a little bit of kind of like a highlight around there. That should be fine. Okay, next. Let's do the lock. So let's bring the lock back in here. And try to copy the colors of the lock. Uh, let's see, we only really have one pink in a 24 set. Just this one, which thankfully matches the one that I'm copying from. Since I'm using a light color to try to cover the dark color, I'm just going to use just a good amount of pressure and then not blend it. Because imagine um, if you're trying to cover up black with white, if you blend it then it just turns gray. <laughs> but I want the pink to stay pink, so I'm not going to blend, at least not over there. Blend a little bit here. And then, looks like there's some fun kind of highlights. And then those darks. What color do you think this is? Or this is that part. Um, hmm. Let's do uh, blue. I know it's not exactly right, but it's close. Gonna do blue and a little bit of gray too. And instead of blending with my finger here, I'm gonna blend with the pink pastel. <laughs> I mean, it's it's close-ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you ever stumped, you kind of think about what um, what's around your picture. Since a lot of the lights and the darks of the suit, at least, are with cool colors, you can, or the lights are cool colors, then you can kind of try to make the object like our goal is to make this object look just as realistic as this object so that they look like they could really be in the same space together 
So if you approach it like that, it might be easier to figure out what colors to use, even if it's not the exact same you see here. I'm gonna use gray for the lock, and then just use black and white, lights and darks. And I am resting my hand on the paper, but I'm being very conscientious of the uh, of the pastel that gets on here. I'm trying to rest my hand on the edge of the paper whenever possible, or with my hand. That's or with my I'm just like holding on to my hand and keeping that off the paper. But sometimes you just can't avoid it if you're doing little details like this in the center of a picture. You just gotta do your best to avoid it. And not rubbing my hand on the picture. I would lift it and then, then wipe it off and then put it back down. And if I need to touch up the background again later on, then that's fine too. <sighs> okay, now if you have a charcoal pencil, that would be a great time to use for like the little dark outline around the lock and the little lights and darks here. But... I'm going to assume that people don't have that and just use the black for the middle of the lock. I'm going to try to find the corner of it to make a thin line. Eh, don't worry, I'll fix that later. Okay, and then the dark salon this side. This side and this side. On the top, kind of around the bottom. Okay. I'm going to use gray to kind of cut back this, this black here and blend it up to the edge. <laughs> okay, and then I need the shines. Wait, actually, let's use a little bit of black around the edges here. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm using white to add highlights to the parts that are raised. In some parts where I want it to look more blended, I'm using less pressure. In other parts where I don't want it to look blended, I use more pressure. Good enough. The, this got a little wonky, but that's okay. All right, let's move our way down to the suit and the tie. The tie has very few lights and the lights are pretty dull. So I'm giving permission to use white for that. A little bit there and a little bit right there. Blend in little circles, wipe off your finger, blend little circles, wipe off your finger, blend little circles. Okay, there's that. And then the darks, I'm gonna use... Hmm. The brick red might be a little bit too warm. This one that I use for the face, I kind of regret using that on the face. So I'm gonna go back to this dark brown for that. But that's how we learn. The more you take your time with things like lights and darks, the more realistic your drawing's gonna look. And that was Renee's kind of whole deal, was to kind of make common things look realistic, but putting them together in a way that is not realistic in order to make it surreal. 
So I'm going to blend with the cooler red. Barely using any pressure. Just kind of blending with the pastel in little circles. So it's kind of like you're mixing colors like on the page. <laughs> so you got something like that. It's okay if it still looks like it's made out of pastel. Just doing some quick little sweeps of blending there. I want a little ham there. That, that'll happen with the cheaper paper. It won't, I won't want to blend anymore. Just trying to make it look calculated. Okay, next, I'm going to take care of this part of the suit, the white I'm going to do last. Uh, because... This side, this inner part of the suit is pretty dark, so I'm gonna use black. My goodness. This side too, but it's just, um, little bit there. Pretty much. Okay, and then bumped, bumped the camera. So the shadow that this puts on the jacket is another dark to add. I'm gonna almost outline it. And then to blend it, I'm going to start from the outside and kind of work my way in. I'm going to use some white on his shoulder here. Okay, next is this part of the sleeve. Just a little bit more pressure where I want it to be darkest. And then just very light pressure to where I just want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, and then the outside of the sleeve also gets darker. This is the dark blue. I notice a little bit of dark blue here. I'm gonna put that here too. And then some of my cheek color. Okay, let's do the other side. We got like 20 minutes left. Going on a pretty good pace. And now this part kind of goes in front.
I'm gonna blend that in with my cheek color. I just want this part just to be a little bit lighter than this part. Some black up here. Okay, I need to lighten up this sleeve quite a bit, so it's good to go like maybe too dark at first and then lighten it back up again. if I can get away with using some purple. There's another kind of fold here on the other side. Okay, so now that I have a bunch of black and stuff on my hands, it's not the wisest to do white right after that. So I'm gonna wipe off my fingers with now a wet paper towel. Okay. Yeah, that is good enough. If you have time to wash your hands, that'd be a good idea too. Okay, next. To do the white here. 
can use a decent amount of pressure with the white pastel, kind of like for the same reason as the lock. Just to kind of clean up the overlap. To make the picture look nice and crisp and sharp. Okay, and then there's like almost no shading on it. The only shading is like very subtle, like right here. There is a line here. There's a shadow of the tie. And underneath the collar, which I'm putting all this in in gray. There's shadow here. Kind of goes down to here. And then the tie also casts a little shadow here. And I'm going to blend that with the white. <laughs> blend that. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much all that needs. And then I can't forget about the button. It is a black button. <laughs> I'm use a little bit of gray to show the middle of the button. I'm gonna put black right on top of that to blend it so it's barely any different. And then there's just a little highlight at the top and the bottom of the button. So boop and boop. Those highlights worked out too well. We can make those a little bit smaller. There. Next, let me go back to the face just a little bit. Brighten up those highlights a little bit. And there's a little bit of a darker line here. So I'm going to come back with the, with the gray. And make that line a little bit darker. I could also use my cheating blue for that a little bit. Just to emphasize that line just a little bit. Let's do his uh, eyebrow. Eyebrow brown. Then this eyebrow. I'm gonna hop over to the ear real quick. Put some some highlights back in there. another line at the side of the face. <sighs> uh, 
and then the eye itself might be able to see just a little bit of it right here so I'm gonna put that in the area around the eyes and shadow just gonna tap that so it's a little bit blurry and tap to blend Then a little highlight for the eyelid. <sighs> okay, well, I think we're about good to call that done. I don't think I missed anything super obvious. Of course, this is a two-hour project, so it can't be perfect. Like, the edges don't need to be perfect and, and so on. That's basically the project from start to finish. Thanks. Uh, I can do one more small demonstration now that we have, I don't know, like five extra minutes. Uh, hold on. I need to wipe off my hands some more. Okay, so let's say... You have a finished picture that you want to keep for however long but you don't have but you know pastel is pastel it smudges since cheap paper it doesn't uh hold on i have to cut this out with scissors so let me show you real quick uh, one of the many ways you could spray you could spray this with um a spray fixative an art spray fixative you could spray it with straight up hairspray it'll still smudge a little bit but that kind of helps it stay put but if you want it to stay put indefinitely you can also laminate it and you can laminate it at like at like a lakeshore learning place at like an office supply place might have laminators that you can use you can buy a laminator online things like that but I'm gonna show you something that I ordered off of Amazon so that you can self laminate things without uh, needing a laminator <laughs> And it makes the picture shiny, and it gives it a 0% chance of getting smudged. And so on. Looks nice after it's trimmed, isn't it? Okay, so this is what I ordered off of Amazon. Just says, peel and stick, no machine needed, 100 pounds, self-adhesive, laminating sheets. 9 by 12 size, perfect photos, signs, certificates, and more. Yay! So, I don't know, it was like $20 maybe. So, it's basically a sticker sheet that has um, a sticky thing on it. So, you can peel it off part way. And then we're just gonna line it up and start at this edge you don't want to lamp you don't want to start right at the edge then there's that then peel off the rest of the plastic try not to get in air air bubbles sorry that's probably loud and then you get another one. And 
You can pretty much do it the same way, but uh, after doing it a few times, since the back isn't as important to be nice, God, or he took one of my hairs. I like to, to just do it this way. I'm gonna just try to line it up best I can. But you start at one end, ba bam. I missed it. <laughs> I didn't get it all the way. Oh well. But now you have it laminated. And then you should ah sorry <laughs> you should use um like a like a credit card or or a gift card or something to smush down the the air bubbles on the sides to get a good seal around the edges. Then you trim off the excess. Do 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 do. Like you made a little uh, plastic sand uh, sandwich. I just goofed a little bit on this last one, so the corner is gonna be sticky. <laughs> but it's fine. As long as you take your time, it should work out. But yeah, now it's all now it's all shiny. And uh, if you don't like a reflection like this, then maybe laminating isn't the best thing to do. But I think it looks nice. Here's a drawing that I laminated a little earlier ago I did it a little bit more properly so there's that one it's um it's a little bit solid so you're not gonna wanna you're not gonna wanna like roll it into a tight ball after that because it starts to kind of make bubbles or peel peel back from itself so it's definitely something that's meant to stay flat <laughs> if you use like a more professional one then it's a different one. Yikes! So I've been using it for this project um, of laminated a bunch of 4x4 four four little sunsets. And Kai, you might have seen me stream this. This is what I stream on my other on my other deal. So now they're like little trading cards. Florida, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, blah blah blah. So yeah, that's all I got to teach you today. Um, if, thank you, if you followed along with me today and made a Rene Magritte inspired picture, you can do this thing where you can email people, but I forgot what the emails are but let me go ahead and maybe go on facebook and i'll share the facebook page of the studio where if you follow it along you can post on there and i'm sure the owner will see it and um share it uh doo -doo -doo. there we go boop Okay, and at 5.30 or a half hour from now, we will go live once more to do another much simpler pastel demonstration of different sports balls and different pictures that you can make with the sports balls and how you can make a, a card for, um, for a Father's Day. So you can gift... Um, kind of a sports themed picture to any father father figure in your life um, that is coming later this month so yeah that will do it for for me 
and I hope y'all have a good night. I'll be live again at 5.30 for, for that uh, one more geared towards younger students. And uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for posting in the chat, Kai. It made me feel a lot less lonely. But yeah, I'll see everybody in like a half hour. You're very welcome. Thanks for watching. Yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye.